Oh, oh, hey everyone, Henry Yellow here. Welcome back. Today we are going to watch the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I can see there are many familiar names who came back for this third movie. The only one we're missing is Gian Maria Volonte, who was the bad guy in the first and second movie. But I can see that uh, Lee Van Cleef, uh, who was Mortimer in the previous movie, uh, apparently in this movie he is a bad guy I think so this should be interesting and just before we start the movie I'd just like to share something with you guys something big happened yesterday the water pipe which supplies water to most of the areas in the state that I live in burst once again we have no water supply and the worst thing is this you know we were not informed in advance because nobody knew the water pipe was gonna burst right so we're, we were not prepared, we didn't have like huge you know, amounts of water stored up. So right now, you know, I think some shops have closed down because there's no water to cook or wash the dishes. And we're also rationing water in my house here. So I'm limiting myself to maybe about two bottles of water per day. And the crazy thing is, Right before I started this recording, I spilled like 30% of this precious drinking water. And I think you can still see you know, the water stains on my, on my hoodie. I'm not sure if you can still see it. My clothes were soaked. My pants were soaked. I had to get a change of clothes. I had to mop up the floor and the table and everything. Um, but the good thing is it happened before the recording, which is so much better. I'd rather have that happen than have it spill during the recording, then that would have been a disaster. So yeah, right now we are just trying to limit the usage of water as much as possible because we don't know how long this is going to last. Like, is it going to be 24 hours? Actually, it's been 24 hours. There's no water. So is it going to last for two days, five days, seven days? We don't know. So we're trying to save up as much water as we possibly can and use the least amount of water that we possibly can. My spill also got my book wet. You can see the little water stains are still there. Ah. So yeah, that was just an update on the current conditions, the current situation. Well, for now, I'm just going to forget about it and enjoy the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> They're really trying to get creative for the third movie. Is this the original music? Is this the original movie where the music came from? Because I think I've heard this before in some other cartoons. Hmm, are we starting off with a showdown in a ghost town? Oh, okay. The ugly. Oh, come on, you couldn't possibly get him at that range. Wow. Was this kid in the second movie? The one who keeps taking 50 cents from Clint? Huh. Something at the bottom of the screen. I thought it was hair stuck on my screen, but apparently it's part of the movie. Looks like hair. <laughs> ah, Lee Van Cleef. The thing about these trilogies is that they really know how to build up the tension. Like these are just two men sitting, sitting down having lunch and it's already feeling so tense. Dang, they don't even need to look at their food to scoop it up. I know nothing at all about that case of coins. Now that gold has disappeared, but if he'd listened, we could have avoided this altogether. I can't tell Baker what happened to the money. I'm only interested in what name Jackson's hiding under now. 
What does he pay you for murdering me? Five hundred dollars to get the name. Bill Carson. That's what he calls himself now. Well, that's worth five hundred dollars even today. Just to get a name. It's all our money. One thousand. Oh. When I'm paid, I always see the job through. Yeah, he could just kill him and take the money for himself. I knew it. Oh no, that there was his kid. Oh man. The name Jackson's hiding under is Bill Carson. He also mentioned something about a certain cash box. He'll never say it to anybody again. Yeah, this is for you. You did a good job for me. Oh, uh, he's gonna kill him. He gave me a thousand. I think his idea was that I kill you. And he always sees his job through. I always follow my job through. And he went. Angela! Whoa! For a moment, I thought he was gonna suffocate him with the pillow. But no. Uh, three headshots. <laughs> the bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lee Von Cleef is playing the bad guy this movie. You know you've got a face beautiful enough to be worth $2,000? <laughs> but you don't look like the one who collected. Hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know, he feels a little bit slower than in his first and second movie. <laughs> oh, You know, son, you are. You're the son of a thousand fathers, all bastards like you. Your mother, she's you bastard. He's got quite a mouth on him. Crimes of murder, armed robberies, perjury, bigamy, deserting his wife and children. Whoa. Passing counterfeit money and. What? He's guilty of so many things. How's he only worth two thousand dollars? Tuco Benedicto Pacifico Juan Maria Ramirez. Oh. oh, he helped him escape. Five for you, and five for me. The neck at the end of the rope is mine. The next time I want more than half. We cut down my percentage. Liable to interfere with my aim. <laughs> if you miss, you had better miss very well. Whoever double crosses me and leaves me alive. He understands nothing about Tuco. Tuco, Benedicto, Pacifico, Juan, Maria, Ramirez. Where is Carson? Carson re-enlisted. Four guys minus an eye. He lives with a girl called Maria. Where is she? Someplace fairly near. Santa Ana. Adios, half soldier. Ah, uh, he was a soldier. Even a filthy beggar like that has got a protecting angel. The music. A golden-haired angel watches over him. Uh oh <laughs> Oh, he runs pretty fast. I'm surprised no one has put out a reward for Clint's head yet, because they saw him help Tuco escape. You never had a rope around your neck. When that rope starts to pull tight, you can feel the devil fight your ass. Now partnership is untied. Not you. You remain tied. I'll keep the money and you can have the rope. <laughs> Way back to town is only 70 miles. If you save your breath, I feel a man like you could manage it. Yo, 70 miles is really far on foot. If I ever catch you, Blondie, I'll rip your heart out and eat it. I'll kill you! After all the times I've saved your life. <laughs> the good, huh? Really. At least he left him alive, you know. He could just kill Tuko and then bring him to another town and claim $3,000 again instead of leaving him alive. And, you know, it's a loose end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not Bill. Where is he? Where could I see him? Where? Where? That's enough! Oh, damn. He packed his things 10 days ago. I want to wait with his unit. The cavalry. 
General Sibley. That's all I know. I swear. Well, he actually got the rope untied and made it to the closest town. He really dehydrated himself to, you know, make the cracked lips. Remington. Hold. Smith Wesson. Another Remington. And this That's one enough. is... Ah, oh, he's gonna make his own. Cartridges. This guy looks like trouble. Why are you giving him bullets? <laughs> oh, those are some penetrative bullets. <laughs> How much? Twenty dollars. <laughs> No, $50. $100. $200. It's all I've got. Here. So easy to get robbed. Uh, <laughs> eh? mm -hmm. The person who got robbed literally provided the robber with the weapon to rob him with. If you work for a living, why do you kill yourself working? I used to have a friend, Pedro, Chico, and Ramon, with two brothers. Oh, Chico and Ramon is from the first movie. Four thousand dollars. If they would help me catch him, a thousand dollars each. Hmm? And the rope dropped down from the heavens. You're alive, Tuco. Is it true? No, it's not true. It's fake. I'm already dead. They say Colonel Canby's closing in with his northerners, and tomorrow they'll be in the city. These rebels have no will to fight. Poor things. Hooray for Dixie! I'm looking for the owner of that horse. He's tall, blonde, and he's a pig. I don't see a pig. Upstairs in room four, senor. Walking with the same steps. Kinds of spurs, my friend. Those are coming by the door. Those are coming by the window. You ever see this before, my friend? Told you, Clint should have killed him when he had a chance. That's right. Make sure the rope is tight. It's got to hold the weight of a pig. Put the rope around your neck. That's very good. I don't shoot the rope. I shoot the legs off the stool. Adios. Well, Clint got lucky. If Clint fell with him, then he would have been hanged to death. Of course, Clint wasn't gonna die that easily. Hmm. They're still holding down the fort, even now? If you're looking for a summer vacation spot, you found it. Healthful and nutritious food. Corn cobs. Dixie style. Our government has spared no expense. The only thing we care about is saving our own height. Corn cobs. They're eating corn cobs. Carson has a patch over one eye. He's with the third. I really doubt that any of them are still alive. And what if they were still alive? You must not have heard anything about Batterville. Those Yankee prison camps. You'd better hope you never end up in. Now Tuco is hunting down Quint, the man's hell-bent on revenge. Seems like he's getting closer and closer. Yep. Guilty of the following crime. So he does this to everyone. 
He does this for a living, that's how he earns his money. And Shorty? <laughs> oh no. He thought he was gonna be saved. Sorry, Shorty. I assume he lets everyone live, and then Tuko's the only one who's actually hunted him down. Over that way, I know it. A hundred miles of beautiful sun-baked sand. Uh, what was it you told me the last time? If you save your breath, I feel a man like you could manage it. <laughs> yeah, guy holds a grudge. Yo, the sun is so hot, it's starting to burn his skin. Come on, bloody, we don't have very far to go. Only 70 miles. Come on! 70 miles more? Wow, Tuko must be extremely resilient to have made the 70 miles before this. Oh man, the sunburn looks so bad. Why does it kind of look like the horse was smiling too? Okay, let's eat. That was a nice little trick, putting his boot over there. Drink, drink. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to let him have it. Oh wow, that rolled down perfectly. I'm so blundy. It's goodbye. Hmm, even his skin is peeling off. <laughs> oh, the third regiment. Wow, everyone inside is dead. If he opens that watch and there's some music, then we know it's a reference to the second movie. Oh, that must be Bill Carson. Two hundred thousand in gold. They always just get me one. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's Bill Carson. Who the hell are you? My name is Bill Carson. Now it's Carson. It's Carson, Carson. Yeah, Carson. yeah. Glad to meet you, Carson. I'm Lincoln's grandfather. I hit the gold. Talk. Huh? Uh, cemetery. Which cemetery? Sad Hill. Why are you telling him everything? Which grave? Yeah. There's a name. Huh? It's written. Uh, 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 water. That's right, get water first. You talk first, I'll give you water later. Nah. Don't die, I'll get you water. Don't die until later. Get away from there! What did he tell you? Hey, he got the name. Surprisingly, the guy told him. Don't die, buddy. <laughs> Don't die. I'm your friend. Oh, now you're a friend. Sure. <laughs> Don't die like that pig. What a bloody. Don't drink. Don't drink. It's no good for you. Don't drink. Man, what an interesting turn of events. It seems like there's another guardian angel keeping watch over Clint. Sergeant, I have a gravely wounded man here if he's not dead already. Name and traveling papers. A corporal of Bill Carson, 3rd Regiment. He's impersonating Carson. Gonna be hunted down by Angel Ice later. You're looking for an infirmary? You'll have to make yourself a Yankee prisoner. <laughs> you wish in San Antonio around here? 18 miles south. The brothers take care of anyone who's wounded no matter what the color of his uniform. Clint isn't wounded though, he just needs water and food. We're a very sick man here. We have no more beds here. Uh, let him have yours. I couldn't really tell the difference, but I think like both sides of the wounded are here. Come on, look out for him, please. He's like a brother to me. He's like a brother to me. Oh, father, did he speak? Did he say anything? Father. 
He should regain his strength in a very short time. You don't know much this boy's life means to me. Thanks be to Jesus. Thanks to all of It's worth 200,000. Blondie. <laughs> the way he's just smiling. You're very lucky to have me so close when it happened. Sure. I must tell you the truth, Blondie. It's all over for you now. There's nothing anyone can do anymore. If I knew that my last hour had come, in your place I would do the same thing. I would tell about the gold. Yes, I would. This guy. If I get my hands on the two hundred thousand dollars, I'll always honor your memory. Come closer. Sleep better knowing my good friend is by my side. <laughs> come on, come on, the party's over. The wagon is all ready to go. Tuco, Father Ramirez is back. Oh, yeah. Ramirez, is it related to him? Because Tuco's name is also Ramirez, right? Hey, Pablo? I was just passing by here. I said to myself, I wonder if my brother remembers his brother. <laughs> oh, his brother. What about our parents? Only now do you think of them. Our mother has been dead a long time now. Our father died only a few days ago. Outside of evil, what else have you managed to do? Go on, preach me a sermon, Pablo. You think you're better than I am. If one did not want to die of poverty, one became a priest or a bandit. You chose your way, I chose mine. Mine was harder. When you left to become a priest, I stayed behind. I tried, but it was no good. You were too much of a coward to do what I do. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Forgive me, brother. So we got a little backstory on Tuco. Nice guy, my brother. He said to me, stay, brother, don't go home. My brother is crazy about me. <laughs> He's a tramp like me, no matter what happens. I know there's a brother somewhere who'll never refuse me a bowl of soup. Everyone has their own story, but they're good, bad. Even the shorty that got hanged had a story, but he got hanged. Those men aren't worried about anything anymore, are they? The troops coming. Come on, Earl Grey. They gray like us. Let's say hello to them and then get going. Hurrah for the Confederacy! God is with us because he hates the ace! God's not on our side because he hates idiots also. <laughs> they are blue, not gray. Oh no. Oh, they joined the prisoners of war. Yeah, what a turn of events. Robert Clark! Prison. Oh, that... That was Chico in the first movie, Mario Brega. Bill Carson! Oh, no way. How did Angel Eyes get in here? Is that Angel Eyes? Yeah. You better be Bill Carson. <laughs> That's me! What are you talking <laughs> Big fat men like you, when they fall, they make more noise. And sometimes they never get up. Sergeant, the captain wants to see you right away. Hmm. So Angel Lies is a sergeant. I want the prisoners treated as prisoners. No more brutality. The prisoners are not to be tortured, cheated, or murdered. I know the prisoners here are being robbed systematically. But as long as I'm commandant, I won't permit any such trickery. Yes, just as long as you're the commandant. I pray I can manage to have enough time to amass evidence and bring to a court martial. I wish you luck. Oh, well, he's a righteous guy. You and the others better lay low for a few days. Now oh, the commandant was right. He's taking all the prisoners' belongings. Yeah, they have. It's been a long time. Sit down. Really now, why would he poison him at this time? Why are you going under the name of Bill Carson now? One name is as good as another. Not wise to use your own name. Like a little music with your meal, Tuco? Yes, it's very good. Very good for the digestion. Bill Carson's name's written on it. Have some. 
It's Bill Carson's tobacco. Ooh, a round of torture begins. Was Carson dead or alive? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Wallace will punch your friend as long as the song goes. Many of us have had a session in there. Oh, okay. How's your digestion now? I have nothing to tell you. Why did I fail you? You're treated terribly. Oh, oh. Damn. He's gonna go blind from that. Which grave? Blondie. He knows the name of the grave. Oh man, it's his turn this time. Put those clothes on. I know the name of the cemetery now. And you know the name of the grave. Hmm. So he doesn't plan to torture him to get the name. You are not gonna give me the same treatment. Would you talk? No, probably not. You knew he wouldn't talk. Just smart enough to know the talking won't save you. Tuco, is he? Not yet. I'm not greedy, I'm only taking half. Really? I doubt that he'll be satisfied with just half. And the clothes that he handed Clint, I think those were his clothes from the first and second movie. Where's the rebel going? To hell with a rope around his neck and a price on his head. Three thousand dollars, friend. I bet they didn't even pay you a penny for your arm. <laughs> friend, if I ever get you down, you're gonna need a lot of help to get up again. So they're gonna hand him over to get the three thousand dollars. If your friends stay out in the damp, they're liable to catch a cold, aren't they? Or a bullet. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Some of these guys are from the previous movie. In three, the perfect number. Perfect number for the bullets he can have in a revolver. <laughs> I know that Angel Eyes won't let uh, Clint live after they've got the money. Because there are six of them. They already have to split it six ways. Sure would like to put your phone on it. I would like to piss this rough. I care while you're watching me. <laughs> oh, that has got to hurt. Oh, oh my goodness. You made a lot of noise, my friend, huh? He's not gonna break the iron like that. He would have a better chance just hacking off the guy's hand. Oh, I see. Not sure how possible this method is, but the guy's size, his whole belly is gonna be shaved off. I don't think he can even fit under the train. Oh, he got dragged along. If he wasn't dead before, he's dead now. I've said this before, but Tuco really has a lot of resilience. And apparently he's very lucky too. Wait, who's this guy supposed to be? Sugar, spice and everything nice. I've been looking for you for eight months. Now I find you in exactly the position that suits me. Wait, is this the guy at the beginning of the movie? <laughs> what? He had a gun with him in a bathtub? Dang. When you have to shoot, shoot, don't talk. Never letting your guard down, bringing your gun to bathe with you. Well. Oh. Yep, he's wearing the same clothes as the first and second movie now. Five more to go. Just a minute! I'll be right there!
Well, well. He's back for revenge. Yeah, I'm here with your old friend, Angel Eyes. Traitor, you talked. If I did, I probably wouldn't be here now. I'm very happy you're working with me. <laughs> and we're together again. Yeah, because Tuco still can't kill him. There's five of them. So that's why you came to Tuco. It doesn't matter. I'll kill them all. He didn't have to come to you. I'm pretty sure that Clint could take five of them on his own. There's two of them. I want that blonde alive. Yep, because he's worth more alive than dead. Were you gonna die alone? Uh-oh. The sniper always stays hidden. Unfortunately, the sniper was a bad shot. He had all the time in the world to aim, and he still missed. Come on. All the cannonballs in this movie are on Clint's side. <laughs> they work for Clint. Angel Eyes, the only one left. All his henchmen died because they had to aim slowly like this. They can't just boom, they had to... See you soon, I idi idiots. It's for you. They'll meet at the cemetery. There should be a bridge across that river. Tuko has taken you this far. I will take you all the way. Hello. Telecap. Yes, sir. Any reason for being around here? Uh, we we want to enlist, General. <laughs> what? So you want to enlist? You got to take a test to prove it. Well, show me. Uh, you've got a career. Let's go. That's it. He just lets them enlist. What if they are spies sent by the enemy? Whoever has the most liquor to get the soldiers drunk and send them to be slaughtered, he's the winner. I guess you gotta drown out the fear. The Rebs have decided that damn bridge is the key to this whole area. The headquarters has declared we must take that ridiculous fly speck. Even if all of us are killed. Both sides want the bridge intact. Boom! In here. I destroyed it all. <laughs> Why not really blow it up, Captain? I've been dreaming about it. <laughs> the best time is after the attack, when there's a truce to get the wounded. But what I like is the guts. Here's the thing though, whichever side secures the bridge, the other side can just blow it up, right? I'd say they're all just running to their deaths. Too badly. Yeah, man, a battle on the bridge, a lot are gonna die. The money's on the other side of the river. What happened there? Somebody was to blow up that bridge. And these idiots will go somewhere else to fight. Maybe. How do you light that match with just one hand? <sighs> They've got their answer right there. Now the question is, how are they going to get these explosives to the bridge? Easy. Easy now. Well, this will help. Keep your ears open. Right, right. Right after the attack. The moment of truce when they have to go and retrieve the wounded. So that's when they have the chance to go over without getting shot. People are gonna wonder why they're dressed differently and why there's a box of explosives on that stretcher. Blondie, hey, you realize we might be risking our lives? You are. Could help me live a little more. Expect good. Whoa, how many did they install? Oh, they're lucky nobody has spotted them yet. 
Why don't we tell each other our half of the secret? Why don't we? Huh? Sad Hill, now it's your turn. Wow, he really told him. Name on the grave is... No way, don't tell me he didn't... Arch Stanton. He got a name. <laughs> oh, I'm not really sure how... They connect. Does the wire connect them all, or... Like one explosion would just lead to the next explosion. It kind of seems like all of them exploded at the same time. The captain, goddess wish, his dying wish, you would say. Why is he just staying in that position like that? Like his butt is exposed. Does he want it to get shot? Apparently he fell asleep like that. <laughs> what? How long did they stay there like that? Everyone's gone. All the cannons, everything is gone. Did it lie down there for days or something? <laughs> this is exact clothing from the first and second movie. No way. Even the aim is near perfect. Oh my goodness, look at the size of this cemetery. How long is it going to take to look for that one gravestone? Hmm, the music. The way he's running like that kind of reminds me of Captain Jack Sparrow in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> His name is oh, unknown, right? I mean, normally you wouldn't put a name instead of putting unknown. Clint is really smart. He just waited for Tuco to search for the grave for him. Clint worked smart and Tuco worked hard. That's right. Be a lot easier with it. That's his costume. Now they've... Yep, yeah, I was just gonna say, they've got to keep an eye out for Angel Eyes. You're not digging? If you shoot me, you won't see a cent of that money. Because... That's not the name? Because there's nothing in there. But then why is there an Arch Stanton? You thought I'd trust you? True. I'll write the name on the bottom of this stone. How did he know there was going to be an Arch Stanton in this grave? Here's a very silly question, a random question. What did he write with? He didn't have a pen or a pencil, right? How, how did he write on the stone? The guitar. <laughs> hmm. Man, you can feel the tension. Oh, are they using a piano now? I thought they were communicating through eye contact that both of them will shoot Angel Eyes first. Oh, and he slid right into that. You wanna get me killed? When did you load it? Last night. Oh, it wasn't even loaded. There's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns and those who dig. Birds die for food and men die for wealth. Here. Unknown. Unknown. 
there's no name on it. There's no name here either. It's the grave marked unknown right beside Arch Denton. Hmm. <laughs> it was the unknown grave. Ooh. Can he be sure that Blondie isn't gonna shoot him? You're joking, Blondie. He wouldn't. I want you to stand up there and push your head in that noose. <laughs> nah, he probably won't let him die. We, we got his entire backstory and all that. Seems just like old times. War for you, war for me. Sorry, Duke. Uh oh. He's gonna die of all that gold in front of him. He really left him to die. The ugly, the bad, and the good. Wait, the, the music just disappeared. Is it supposed to be like that? Like, I'm, I can't hear any sounds right now. Oh man, I think I got a bad copy or something. There's literally no sound, no music right now. The pig. Now luckily the audio only cut off at the right at the ending. So I didn't really miss out much. I just missed out the, the music, I guess. Oh, this is the extended English language version. Oh, it could be that for the whole, for all the three movies, when what they say don't match their lip movements, it could be that they're not speaking English. That's why they had to dub it over with English. And the ending is still the same music that we've been hearing throughout the movie. All right then, that was awesome. It was an entire adventure which seemed to be split into two parts in the end the bad guy died but the ugly guy survived and the good guy of course he lived right right now i'm gonna search to find a, find out about the the battle for the bridge which we saw near the end of the movie the battle itself was not a real thing it was fictitious uh, but the military campaign was true because in 1862, General Sibley conducted this New Mexico campaign. So they were looking for a southern route for supplies, but it wound up being a failure. And then another comment said that the entire movie is historically out of sync of the time frame of the Civil War, especially the firearms that were used. The battle over the bridge which we saw in the movie is very loosely based on Burnside's bridge. It wasn't a wooden bridge, it was a stone bridge, and it still stands today. Lincoln led the United States through the American Civil War, defeated the insurgent confederacy, abolished slavery, and modernizing the US economy. I'm sure Sergio Leone also intended to show us a bit more about the Civil War because there were many parts of uh, many parts involving the civil war throughout the movie you know the confederacy flooding throughout fleeing through the desert and then we see the wounded soldiers the broken down fort and then the battle at the bridge aside from the war we see the the tension the the build up before each showdown you know, and the adventure and all the twist and turn of the events that happen throughout the movie. It definitely is much, uh, we can see a huge improvement, you know, comparing this movie with the previous two movies. And we also see uh, Clint Eastwood getting the costume which he had in the first and second movie. So it kind of makes it seem like uh, these three movies are tied up together somehow, just a different timeline. But of course, the the, the name of the main character is different they never really had a name because in the first movie people just call him joe second movie people call him monko but those might not be his real names so he is the only person who is the the similar thing that ties up all three movies and a lot of the cast also 
are the same people because besides Clint Eastwood, we see Gian Mario Volante, which came in the sec first and second movie, and then we see Lee Van Cleef, which was in the second and third movie, and uh, the side characters are the same, like Mario Brega, uh, Bernito Stefanelli, and we see recurring side characters. Even the blonde guy who got killed in the second movie came back as uh, a bad henchman in this third movie. So it's nice that you know they recasted many of the same people for these movies, even though they are just side characters. And then the music, yeah, the music is very nice. Uh, and I believe this is the movie where the the music originated from. The da -da 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 -da, da -da -da. I hear that a lot in some movies, which I don't particularly recall, but I'm pretty sure it was used a lot after this movie in different movies and different settings. So it's nice to know where this uh, music actually came from. This movie is a pretty long movie. It's three hours long, but it was worth it for the three hours. And I finally finished the trilogy, the Clint Eastwood uh, or the Dollars trilogy. So yeah, this is awesome. And if you enjoyed the reaction, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.